and we are recording. All right, thank you, Sandy. Um, so I'm going to welcome everybody to the April 12th meeting of um, Nuwari. This is a uh, public meeting that is happening virtually over Zoom um, in accordance with Governor Baker's emergency order that permits us to conduct these meetings such way. Um, these meetings constitute a way for everybody in the public to have access to the meetings. Um, and this particular meeting will feature public comment um, as part of the meeting as we're looking for public comment on our draft interim report to town meeting um, this evening. So with that, I wanna welcome everybody here. Um, our first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of January 25th, 2021. If I could have a motion, which was our last public hearing, I will just note. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion on those minutes? Then I will um, call the order that I have in front of me. Raman? Yes. Matt? Matt? Yes. Natasha? Yes. Toyin? Yes. Vivian? Yes. Jen? Yes. Sue? Yes. Marcus? Yes. And I will also vote yes. So those minutes are approved. Um, tonight is our public listening session. Um, on our draft interim report. And I just, uh, when we last met, we were thinking that Mary Lammy may be here tonight from the school committee or from the school department. She is not able to attend tonight or the group that they wanted to attend is not able to attend. So they are going to come to our next meeting on uh, April 26th. So I wanna let people know that. So I'm hoping that after the public hearing tonight, we might have some more discussion on our initial reactions to the draft interim report. So we'll kind of focus there first and then we can carry on with that discussion at our next meeting. Um, so that would be good. Um, for uh, attendees, I'm going to try to do a pretty brief overview of um, some of our work quickly. I I'm hoping that most of you have had a chance to read uh, the draft report, um, but if we can start with that, Katie, I'm gonna ask if you can share your screen, please. Sure, let me pull it up. Does that look right? That, that looks right, I think. Good thing, thank you. Um, so this is uh, a report of the working group for a public meeting. Um, our last public meeting, we had sought input on the vision and guiding principles. And at this point, um, Nuwari has recommended those to the select board and they were adopted by the select board. Uh, I'll come back to those. Um, but we're going to talk tonight about other portions of the work that Nuwari has undertaken and what some initial um, kind of takeaways and reactions are. Next slide. Just for everybody, um, we have um, some meeting norms and agreements that Lisa uh, Smith McQueenie brought to us. Um, and I think it's always a good place to start and we hope that everybody will engage uh, in this way with each other. So if we can keep that in mind, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Next slide. Just a reminder of who is on the working group um, and I'm looking, um, there's one update here. So Dennis uh, Zhang has stepped down from the working group, but everybody else with the exception of Jay Spencer is able to join us this evening. Jay is busy and we're hoping he might join us mid meeting, but we'll see how that goes. Um, it's been noted that this is um, quite a diverse group. One of the most groups, I think Raman's note would is, uh, the most diverse group he's ever been part of in Needham and I am grateful for everybody's participation here. Um, this is a group that was asked to commit 
uh, late last summer or maybe early fall. And we have been meeting two or three times a month since um, October to get to this point where we have produced a body of work and we can start to talk with a town meeting about what we've learned so far and what kind of goals we might set for the next year. This is not intended to be a permanent group. It's a group that the select board asked to come together and provide some uh, certain goals and I'll go through them in just a moment um, for the town and for the select board in terms of some advice. So with that, I think the next slide, Katie, will bring us to the working group charge. So the group was charged with recommending a vision for racial equity in Needham and the guiding principles. And that piece of our work has been completed and recommended. Um, we don't necessarily say that these are a forever set of guiding principles, but we think they're a good set to start with. And we welcome um, other members in the community in working with us um, on helping to make Needham a better place. Um, at this point, uh, Sandy Sincata has uh, emailed all the different, uh, the, all the different uh, elected committees and appointed committees in the town um, with the vision and the guiding principles and the intentional practices, asking them to endorse or adopt them as appropriate for their work um, and to join us in this work. And similarly, we've asked a number of community groups. And thus far, the League of Women Voters and Green Needham have both adopted or endorsed um, the vision and guiding principles already. Um, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee of the Newton Needham Chamber has recommended their adoption to the chamber and the chamber will take that up at their meeting at the end of the month. Um, the Needham Interfaith Clergy Association expects to undertake the discussion soon but lets us know that they stand certainly in solidarity with the intent and goals um, that have been discussed here. Um, Needham Diversity Initiative also plans to take this up at their meeting on Wednesday this week. Um, Equal Justice Needham will need to have some further discussion with, they have indicated that they have some concerns about Nuari's structure. So uh, at some point when things have calmed down over, over the next few days, uh, I'm hoping um, to have a conversation, although um, they have indicated that they don't have a particular leader. So it's a little more complicated. We'll figure it out. So there are several other items that we are expecting uh, to undertake. So um, certainly we'll be making some recommendations to the select board. This report is a first initial pass at some uh, recommendations already. Um, and then the items like establishing the protocols and practices for getting feedback and setting up communication structures are critically important for the ongoing sustainability and accountability of this work. Uh, but those are pieces that we will be undertaking over the next year as we look to transition from Nuari to different community and town government groups owning parts of this work and, and putting in place a structure for it. All right, next slide, please. As I mentioned, we've met two or three times per month since October. Uh, we have su succeeded in having a discussion about what we believe the vision and guiding principles should be. We prioritized a number of top areas for uh, understanding what currently exists in the town and what we think some of the key issues are. We had a public listening session in January and then are holding this one tonight and an interim report has been drafted that we look forward to feedback on. Next. So I think um, what I would note is that this board is really part of a town of volunteers that serve on any number of boards and committees working in conjunction with um, town staff to solve a set of complex issues. And so that's the, I think, important context to guide all of us. Um, th this is not work certainly that the select board could do alone. It's not something that can be dictated by fiat. It is going to take all of us working together. And so I think uh, the initial recommendations uh, recognize that while we can make suggestion and create hopefully the conditions that people will feel inclined to support, it will take all of us. So a number of suggestions here, hopefully you have read them in the report. 
Um, next slide. In thinking about boards and committees, that was one area that we uh, looked at briefly. Um, I think we, we've all noted that probably most committee members in town are white. A relatively small number overall are female. Um, it has been noted I'm the ninth woman to serve on the select board in a town that has more than 300 years of select board history. All right, and we are look and have elected uh, women on a number of other boards, um, most successfully on the school committee, but we're starting to see women at other places as well. And I am hopeful that we will increasingly see um, people of color on our committees. So, but there's work to be done and we would hope to be able to cast a broader net in terms of recruiting a more diverse group of candidates for both elected and appointed positions. Next slide. Um, there are a number of things with respect to the community. Um, in keeping with select board goals, this committee would agree that we need to work with stakeholders to develop a discrimination complaint process. And I think work is beginning. Um, I believe actually there's a meeting on my calendar for tomorrow morning with the Needham Human Rights Committee as they start to discuss um, a discrimination complaint process. We're also looking as it relates to the bottom line item to create a framework um, across the community for problem resolution and um, for how we can all engage in conversations about race. Um, we've talked and it's been interesting to learn about uh, what exists in the town for affinity groups for various people in the community. Um, there's the new Asian American Pacific Islander group, um, the Indian community of Needham, the Chinese Friends of Needham. Uh, Natasha's referred to an informal list of Latina women in Needham. So there are a variety of groups and hopefully um, people in the community can feel supported um, in their various ways. Next. What I think is probably um, what I would like to highlight in this slide is actually the final bullet where we're really interested in working with and engaging all of the partners in town. Um, as I mentioned in some of the groups who are thinking and looking to uh, endorse and adopt the Nuari vision and principles, but working with the faith community, the business community, hospitals, um, getting to Olin and Babson as they engage with our communities and the various civic and community organizations. We really think that engaging everybody as partners will help to make us all more successful in moving this forward. Housing. So housing was one of the key areas that's been articulated as a priority in town. Um, it's challenging in Needham because we are a community that sees increasing demand, um, but in fact, we have very limited land and are well built out. Um, there are increased costs that are due to our location and the demand for that location. Um, people like the location of Needham. They like the fact that we have four rail stations and excellent schools. All of that makes it a highly desirable community. Despite all that, the town has worked hard um, to get to a 10% threshold for affordable housing. There is much more work that we can do. And I think that this group has identified um, a couple of areas that we'd like to look at a little bit more and figure out how we could encourage more uh, families and more development across all affordability levels. Um, the town will also be looking to seek new goals now that they've passed the 10% threshold. And that's something that we'll have a conversation with the community about. Next, policing. Um, we've actually spent the most time so far talking about policing um, with the police chief having come to two meetings. There's clearly much more discussion that needs to be had here. Um, I, the, the chief spent a good amount of time talking with us about the training that the department goes through and about um, how they are thinking about that training going forward and also helping us to understand something about the police reform legislation that has been passed 
concurrently with our work um, by the state and that will not come into effect until July. So we don't fully know all the pieces of it yet. Um, but I think that what we've learned and what the group has been able to say is that um, things like you see here de-escalation De-escalation is something that's called out in our use of force policy, but what the committee heard from the chief suggests that there's more work to do there. Um, the, the training work to help police officers de-escalate in a situation, for example, where weapons are used, we think there's probably de-escalation that needs to take place on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, since everybody talks about their concern if they're approached by a police officer at some point in time, and that concern is heightened for somebody who's of color, all right? So de-escalation on a day-to-day -day in a situation where anybody is going to be tense, the police need to be particularly sensitive around that issue. And I think what we've learned from the chief was they maybe hadn't really fully considered that before, but the chief has committed that he is uh, listening and is committed to this work. More recommendations. There are lots, lots of work to be done in the area of policing. If we move on to the schools, since I'm trying to get to the point so that people can comment. Um, the schools, people will recall, have the Rio Coalition, which stands for Race, Equity, Access, Leadership. Um, and so the goal of Nawari is not to replace the Rio Coalition or to necessarily dictate the work of the real coalition, but rather we wanna figure out how to be complementary and how to ensure um, that the concerns of the committee in fact are reflected there. Um, the real coalition has been in place though for a number of years since an equity audit was done after um, learning that High Rock and Pollard had been placing all of their black students in one cluster. That was a concern to many people, um, particularly uh, one of our own committee members had a child who was impacted by that decision. Um, the committee or the community agreed that that was not how we would like to see things occurring that led to this equity audit and then to the establishment of the real coalition. So the real coalition provides uh, leadership and guidance for the schools as it relates to policies and practices, curriculum and instruction, professional learning and hiring and development. Um, so we really are working with them to ensure that uh, among the things that I think we've heard the most has been a desire that there really is a focus on curriculum and on learning about all of American history from its many perspectives. Next. Um, again, you'll see this last bullet talks about our collaborations with partners. Um, the schools have actually a great relationship with St. Joe's since they, Emory Grover is right next to St. Joe's. But we think that partnering with other schools in town like St. Joe's and like St. Sebastian's, again, needs to be considered as part of our community engagement and, and our working with others in the community. Staffing recommendations. So um, one of the other areas of concern expressed and prioritized by the group did relate to staffing in the town and the schools. And we appreciated um, both of them, both human resources departments coming to speak with us. Um, there has been uh, some work that has already begun. Uh, certainly things the town described their applicant tracking software that's hiding or shielding personally identifiable information so that they can eliminate early bias in the hiring process. Um, we have talked about uh, some of the challenges that exist in recruiting for our police. That's a, a separate issue, but that's related to police reform. So more to come on that. Um, we've had some discussion about perhaps the town could partner more with other communities for professional development opportunities. So raising certain issues, of, again, about how do we collaborate, create partnerships that let us do something on a slightly larger scale and figure out how to um, train those around us at the same time as we're working to move forward. One of the things that's happened, the last bullet point here that um, was an initiative that we were excited to hear about is that Parks and Recreation 
is working with our Metco students so that they have access to summer jobs and transportation to get to town to work those summer jobs um, this summer. So I'm glad that that's something that they'll have access to as well. All right, next steps. So we have more work to do. Um, I think when this group was established, there was originally, the original goal was people thought that all of the work would be completed before town meeting. And there was a, a request for a report um, for May's town meeting. But in fact, you know, we started in October and I think the group has worked very hard. And I'm very grateful for the time and thoughtful discussion that's been in place. It's not enough to get through all the work, um, but, but we do recognize that the goal is to figure out where this work does belong and what the priorities are for getting started. So this is the first step. And um, with that, I'm going to open it up for comments. Oh, let me, let, me, let me say this first, and we'll come back to this at the end, Katie, after we've had public comments. But we would ask you please to raise your hand so that we can take people in order, all right? And have remarks that are limited to about three minutes. Um, we definitely encourage you, if you want to say ditto, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you are welcome to provide feedback. And in fact, one person already has provided some feedback. Um, they thanked us for the ability to provide feedback on an anonymous basis, although we certainly um, always appreciate somebody giving their name and their contact information. So if we need to follow up, we can. Um, Natasha and I had talked last week about some possibilities so that people could reach out to Nuari members directly. And if somebody would like to do that, um, I think that they're welcome to do that. What I've learned is that it's not actually something that we can quickly solve. The town is limited in the number of email accounts that they have. So we're gonna to try to figure that out. In the meantime, we can use Nuari at needamma.gov if somebody would like to speak to a particular person about some piece of feedback and there's somebody they would be more comfortable connecting to, we're happy to support that. Um, just reach out to that email and let us know who you would like to talk to. Okay, so I will offer that. With that, I think we would like to open it up. Katie, if we can sort of unshare. Hopefully people will think that's a fair and very rapid summary of some of our high points. I don't think we touched on everything, but <laughs> tried to take a quick run. Um, I can see that Noah Mertz has his hand up. If we could bring him in. Okay. Hi, Hi Noah. Can you see me? We can see you. Okay, great. Hi everyone, thank you again for everything that you're doing with uh, this group. I'm really grateful. I've been following very closely. I've been to every every meeting so far. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, reiterate a couple of the points that I uh, responded with to Marianne uh, in response to uh, the adopting of Nuari's guiding principles. So what we part of what we said was based on a kind of a misunderstanding, I guess, of what the length, the duration of Nuari's working group would be. Um, so the, the, the main thrust of what we're hoping to see is the continuation of this work in some sort of substantial way. Um, so that could be in the Nuari working group itself in continuation or some other group adopting the, the same sort of like working principles and goals. Uh, but what we said is that EJN participants would be happy to endorse the Nuari statement as a set of guiding principles for our select board going forward, as long as a couple concerns are addressed. Based on our observation of the Nuari working group itself, we are concerned about what is missing in the statement, which is a clear explanation of the current place of Nuari within the structure of town government. So that may be resolved. Um, but in addition to that, um, in addition to the mission statement, we would also like to see something about a transparent and consistent process for the appointment of Nuari or whatever members of that uh, board would be going forward, the democratic structure, chairship, not being restricted to select board members and actually being democratically um, appointed or a rotating chair. Um, one possible 
avenue could be maybe the Needham Human Rights Committee getting sort of re-empowered and being able to take on some of this work. Um, but the, the main idea is just to ensure that the, the work continues through a, a board or committee that has some real like decision-making power. Um, I've talked to people on the Human Rights Committee and it sounds like that has not been the case in recent years. And one other point that I would like to make uh, to, uh, in response to a comment you made, Marianne, uh, yeah, we do not have a lot of diverse representation in our committees and our boards in town. And we have an opportunity to change that, at least start to change that tomorrow on election day. And um, I'm really excited to be voting for some candidates um, who will potentially be the first uh, who look like them in, in some of these positions. Frankly, I have been a bit uh, disappointed by the lukewarm, if any, support that candidates of color have gotten by people in, in power currently. Um, so I'm just hoping to see some uh some some change on that front as well uh, as a result of this election thank you thank you noah sandy i see anna geraldo Kerr. yes i'm trying to i'm trying to find his name thank Sorry, you noah. keep Appreciate jumping it. around thank you noah uh i Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, Anna. Yes, we can hear Hello. you and see you. Hi. Great. Thank you so much for um, bringing me up. Um, I, first of all, also, I just sent you an email. Uh, it's a bit of a lengthy one. I don't intend to read it. So I just want to highlight a few points. Um, I think Katie mentioned that she has forwarded the email to you. Uh, I don't know if one, the chair or to to the whole group. But I wanted to definitely uh, have on record the, I acknowledge the work you're doing. I do uh, equity work and this is not a pitch for work. I'm just <laughs> that I can relate to what you're going through. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort um, and I am as committed, um, you know, we're, com we're all committed. I share that commitment. And because of that is that I share you, uh, sent you that email. There are a couple of points to make there. One is that I'm not clear, um, I think I like the thoroughness and I can see that there's been a lot of, uh, the process has been intense and thorough. I get that. The part that I'm not clear and that I would like to um, suggest something is the recommendations because the recommendations um, seem to be premature if we haven't engaged the communities that are affected by uh, the different areas, like housing, police, education, so on. So to me, um, those recommendations may be perceived as indefinitive, particularly for folks who are not following your process, who are not following, you know, that you're going through a step, you're in a phase one of, of a long-term effort. So perhaps you may want to say something like suggested recommendations pending, you know, something pending community engagement, the partnerships that you discussed. So, because to me, it was, it was, I took it aback as a whoa, they're way ahead and they haven't they haven't talked to the community. So that that was a, a, a serious concern. And the other one is, and, and there's more detail in the email I sent you. Generally, when this and these efforts are done, the the group starting the, the effort, they go through a, a process of, sh of of sharing of sharing understanding. So so going through issues of institutional racism and conscious bias. All, there are four, four uh, particular parameters that I shared with you in the email, and I have a good resource that is actually about government equity that you can use, um, perhaps as a, as a guiding um, document, that so that you all have an under, you all want to help solve the issue, but you're coming at it from different angles. So reconciling your perspective about racism and their perspective, that needs to be clarified before you start making decisions. You see, so to me, it's kind of like the cart before the horse, but but I, I understand that there you need to move forward with this. So 
but I just wanted to, you know, before you keep going, I just wanted to say maybe there could be a pause for regrouping and, and, and looking at that issue. And lastly, um, the, the um, equity statement is, um, and this is where my equity hat comes in a bit more. Um, racial equity is, is a goal that in my circles is never accomplished. Eradicating racism is a myth where I come from with my colleagues is more about mitigating the impact of racism and uh, managing our own biases and uh, becoming anti-racist. And it's, it's a practice. It's like yoga, it's like anything else, <laughs> you name it. So, so I think it's misleading to say eradicating. It's not going to end, it's more like going to be managed. So again, you know, setting those expectations of, of reality, because I, I think a lot of us will love to take a pill and get rid of racism, but that's not how it works. So to me, just setting those expectations, particularly for the folks who are not as, as, as close to this effort as some of us are. You know, so we, there is a, there's a process of educating the town as, as well as making progress on this issue. So how do you manage that education process while you're trying to make some progress? I thank you for those thoughts, Anna. And I, I think this is a committee that has certainly showed that they're willing to step back and regroup. Uh, we did that week after week after week, in fact, as we were working through the vision and guiding principles. So I, I certainly look forward to uh, reading your thoughts and I'm sure others do as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, John. Hey, Marianne, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for this opportunity. It caught us a little bit, at least myself, a little flat foot and wasn't aware but I'm glad to have this chance. And uh, I guess the one thing uh, that I wanna do is to uh, uh, read the original conclusion from the Tidwell report and then make a couple of requests of the committee. I understand there's probably not uh, feedback here. That's not what the design is, but I thought I would do this. Although these words might be familiar, I thought it would be appropriate. <clears throat> so uh, section seven conclusion, uh, more than once during our interviews of NPD officers, we heard words to the effect of Mr. Henry wasn't charged. So as if to infer that his release from arrest without further law enforcement involvement was essentially no harm, no foul. It is similarly tempting for others to ca uh, casually encapsulate Mr. Henry's experience with NPD as having been in, been in the wrong place at the wrong time or to minimize as a petty indignity what he endured, a roughly 30 minute detention in handcuffs on a public street in the middle of a Saturday afternoon, a mere two blocks from his workplace. These seizures represent a serious intrusion upon the sanctity of the person, which may inflict great indignity and arouse strong resentment, and it is not to be undertaken lightly. As we are all too aware from recent events, these encounters can also have tragic consequences for people of color, black men in particular. Fortunately, that was avoided here. Our hope is that Mr. Henry's experience will serve as an impetus for greater awareness of the issues raised in this matter, implementation of the policy and procedural modifications we submitted above, and an overdue acknowledgement of the harm caused to Mr. Henry. I want to focus on the final phrase there, uh, an overdue acknowledgement of the harm caused to Mr. Henry. Having spoken to Marvin Henry, he has not received through his attorneys or otherwise an apology I understand there's been some brokerage around that apology. I will uh, submit to you that that is not how apologies work. When one has harmed another, one simply apologizes. And I would ask that the Nuari, as, uh, as a group that is focused on these issues, consider, uh, consider issuing such an apology to Mr. Henry, regardless of the consequences from a legal reliability standpoint, the right thing to do is always the right thing to do. Uh, a separate issue, which you may choose to uh, take up, uh, is why this section was removed from the final report. Uh, and the reason that I am putting these forward to you folks is within the various 
uh, committees that exist within the town of Needham. You folks are uniquely positioned for oversight of uh, issues related to equity, uh, broadly speaking, and specifically with respect to the select board that oversees the uh, police department and the police department itself. So uh, that was my, my comment. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, John. Um, I am, uh, the question of the apology, I, I'm dismayed to hear that uh, Mr. Henry does not, has not heard an apology. Um, my understanding uh, was that Mr. Henry, in fact, watched the select board meeting, which may mean that he heard something directly from the select board. And I'm fairly certain, despite the statement that he did not hear previously last August from his attorneys, that had his attorneys chosen not to reveal the town's offer to him, that that may be um, not an appropriate practice of the law. I, you know, I would think that they that should be disclosed to their client um, on the town's behalf when we well, extended that. Well, I'm not an attorney, Marianne, but, but I'd be happy to respond to both of those statements. First of all, uh, and I do not represent Mr. Henry, nor am I an attorney. First of all, uh, my understanding is that there was a back and forth of which Mr. Henry was aware with respect to whether an apology would be issued by the town. Uh, ultimately, that was uh, brokered as part of some sort of deal. I don't understand the parameters of that, but turning down that apology, that was the understanding from my point of view. The second thing is that I sat uh, with Marvin Henry shortly after the event on the 15th in which the select board apologized to the air and to affect, in effect the town and to the listening audience. His response after I said, well, there was an apology because I was viewing it very much the way you are, Marianne. He said, well, that's fine, but there was no apology to me. Uh, okay. So, so I, John, I, I hear you. Of, uh, uh, Marianne, I'm not here to speak on behalf of Marvin Henry. I, am I, I understand. All right. So I just, all I can reflect is the select board side. I'm really not here to have a back and forth. I very much hope that the select board will be able to apologize to Mr. Henry. That has been my goal since last July. All right. Directly to Mr. Henry, because I do believe that people can have a conversation face to face. It's that much better like than you, through lawyers. So you, I do hope that can happen. I that right. sounds like a qualifier on the uh, on the uh, the apology to say I need to have it face to face. What I'm saying is there's nothing stopping the select board from issuing an apology today. We and issued I, one I'll on leave. March 15th. All Sorry. right. I, I I we issued one on March 15th. I do hope that we Not can have it face to, to face. I think it's important for people to understand um, also with respect to the report. Um, I think uh, the select board failed to understand when the draft version of the report and the draft report that we accepted as the final version that had just arrived shortly before our meeting. Uh, we made both of those public because both of those would certainly be discoverable under any Freedom of Information Act. All right, so both of them were made public. Um, the difference between the draft report and the final report, there was no direction from the select board as it relates to that last paragraph. We made a couple of comments. Um, the comments had to do with the fact that we did let Ms. Tidwell know that we had extended an offer seeking to make uh, an apology to Mr. Henry back in August. So we just let her know that that had uh, been something the town had tried to do. And we asked pursuant to the order of work that we had requested from her that she make very clear what her recommendations were. That produced the second report that has a very succinct group of recommendations that was not evident in the first draft. The, that was the guidance or the request. That was what we got back the second time. There's nothing more than that between those two reports. Um, so I, I understand it's become an issue and my apologies for that. I would not have known or we might have had more discussion before since both reports were made public. All right. Any other hands? Joe Leghorn. Uh, 
Great. Hi, Joe. Hi. You knew oh. I couldn't resist. Now we can see you. Yeah, and I know. And I, I had my first post-COVID haircut, and I'm not used to the short hair again. Um, you know what? It, I'm sure it will get whipped back into shape. <laughs> So I guess my thought is, is that the history of Western European domination of the new world and slavery has been going on for over 500 years and 400 years in this country. We have made efforts over time to try to address this issue. And then often they peter out. And I, and I certainly hope, you know, things were quiescent for too long. And I think for people of my generation, we thought we had reached a certain milestone in 2008 with the election of uh, Barack Obama as president. But that was, a false messiah in some so many ways. So while anyone can quibble with efforts now, I applaud the committee for its work and its efforts. Um, anyone can nitpick and argue over little things, but I think that the fact that we are hopefully engaging in a sustained commitment to advance racial social justice in this in in town and in this country is important and we all make mistakes nothing is perfect but i always argue with folks and, and counsel the perfect is the enemy of the good we need to do things that advance the ball are they perfect no but as, as fdr said early in the Great Depression, we'll try something. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. You just can't give up. And so um, I would hope that as a, a community, um, both the select board, uh, which will have one new member uh, for certain, uh, will commit to you know lo this long-term goal uh, I would hope that the rest of the town individually would commit to this long-term goal and that we all work together and get to know each other. Um, unfortunately, this last year has prevented us from really getting to know each other. Um, and so my, the, only, the only other thing that I would say is so we can all get together and converse in person is please, everyone, get a vaccine. Um, so I, 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 I applaud you for your efforts. Um, you know, keep up the good work. It's often difficult. Uh, sometimes you're challenged in your own self as to where you've been and where you're going to. So, but I, I really appreciate uh, the effort that you've put into this. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I hope we're all working on the vaccine front. So, um, and, and uh, can find a place where we feel comfortable with that. I'm looking to see if there are other hands. You know, it's interesting. Last week I spoke to the um, Beth Israel Deaconess Needham Board of Advisors about our work. I am on the Board of Advisors at the hospital having previously been on the board of advisors, then a trustee for nine years, and now back on the board of advisors. Um, but at any rate, I talked there about the challenges for this group of meeting via Zoom, getting to know each other via Zoom, having every word recorded on Zoom and posted to YouTube, and how you do that with the challenging conversations around race, I just thank everybody for. Um, I also spoke there um, because that was where I learned about the role of apology. And I do think that the hospital has been a model uh, for that, where they have uh, apology as a clear part of any medical issues with patients and have put that practice in place. And it was the very first question I asked um, back in July related to apology, because I am a 
believer in talking with people and being able to say, this was not the way we want it to be. It's important. Hands, anybody, comments? Well, Katie, if there's no further comments, could we just put up that last slide again so that we can remind people how if they think of something after our meeting, how they can share their comment? Um, you know, again, I would hope you'll find on the Nuari page the ability to uh, send a comment in either anonymously or with your name as it works for you. Um, you would have the ability to email your comments as well, or if you wish to speak to somebody and there's somebody you're more comfortable speaking to, please email Nawari at needhamma.gov and we will figure out how to make that happen. But we welcome people's comments and I appreciate um, the thoughts that came tonight. And we certainly appreciate the community's support. I can see that Noah has uh, his hand raised again. If we could bring him in. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was very flustered earlier and I um, forgot to finish a thought. Um, but I, I did just want to revisit the point about this election. I've been very deeply involved in um, in working for some of the candidates for this election and am pretty new to town politics and yeah, I, I just, I feel like I need to say this, and this is a, a, a rare public forum to kind of share these thoughts to those in power. And um, on the point of, of the, the lack of support for candidates of color, it's just something that I've noticed is that there's a lot of talk in town about like, oh, it would be, it's important, it's a value of Needham to diversify those in leadership positions, et cetera. And frankly, when it comes to walking the walk, I haven't seen that. And I'm just kind of baffled by the the space between the rhetoric around so like actually, you know, the rhetoric around diversifying leadership, whatever that means. And then when it actually happens to ha that we have amazing candidates um, who would effectively do that, I don't see that open and embrace. And um, that's just something I wanted to voice because it's something that we as a community need to really be thinking about that transition from talking the talk to walking the walk. Um, and it certainly has not gone unnoticed by a lot of people in town. Um, and it does send a message to future candidates who do not fit the typical mold or who haven't gone, you know, in the typical avenues into these positions. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. I, I am actually happy to be accountable uh, for that uh, at this point. I have not uh, endorsed a candidate. There are two candidates of color who are running. One of them is Marcus um, for select board. And I'm presuming that at least one of them will be joining me as a colleague, all right? And because I don't know who it will be, one or both, it makes more sense for me to just be ready to embrace and work with who joins the select board. So I look forward to doing that. But for that reason, I have stayed out of um, making that particular selection. So um, I think the town will speak and I look forward to working who's on, with whoever's on the select board. Any other comments? All right. 
then if we could come back to focus as a committee, I guess one more time, I'll just say if there is feedback, people can go to the website, there's the link for the form, or there is nuari at needhamma.gov um, to, to submit feedback, we're happy to hear. Um, I appreciated Anna Geraldo Kurz, um, Geraldo Kurz, uh, comment about, you know, you really haven't had time to go through all these. I know we all felt like we haven't had time to go through all these issues in depth, and perhaps there is a better way that we can make clear in this um, beyond, you know, as I kept saying, draft, interim, you know, adding all those caveats to say that we are at step two of, you know, five steps or step two of 10 steps somehow so that people understand that we, we understand that there is work and engagement to go through in each of these areas next year. But I'm curious about other thoughts. Marianne, I have, I have a comment just because I read what Anna wrote and I thought that she made some really good points, not only about us, you know, not, not having community input yet. So finding creative ways of doing that would be really important. But also she made a, a question about the about the way that we wrote some of these items where we wrote should on everything rather than an action item. So it's just something that I think we should review one more time. Um, if that's the way that that the group thinks we should move forward rather than um, more of an action item of things that we want to accomplish versus a suggestion. So I just wanted to bring that up because I thought her points were really um, well taken. Okay. Other thoughts? I, I so I agreed with that 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 maybe we can soften how that's phrased for sure because certainly any recommendations that we're making right now are tentative. They're sort of preliminary coming out of that first discussion and they were captured from that. Vivian. I was going to echo what Natasha said, though I'm mindful that you know I don't want those attending the hearing to think that we have made any decisions on behalf of the town or issued directives of any kind. I know the word should is there. It's not a word that I particularly love. Um, it, you know, but however, in this context, what we were talking about was shared principles and and sort of deliberating our deliberations and our, our work over the last six months has really been to identify a, an approach um, and to provide a framework. Um, I don't think it's intended to be direction to anybody. I mean, we're not saying, um, you know, pick up our work, endorse us. I mean, we, that's not how we are. We're not a governing body and nor do we have, um, um, you know, the power or the control or the authority to do any of that. Um, you know, we don't have the ability to endorse candidates. We don't have the ability to instruct a community organization and its leadership to um, fall in line I and mean, that's not what we've been about. We've really been in about uh, having an initiative to think about what do we care about? What do we suggest we further study and review and disseminate so that there is a little bit of a consistent plan? So I, I just, I wanna clarify that though. I echo what Natasha said that, you know, we certainly, this is why we've asked for feedback. And I think that's so important. And I, I suspect as the report was drafted, right, we were caught a little bit in a hard spot between a sense that there are those in town who expect a final conclusion by now and trying to be clear that we're not there. And um, we need to be sure that we're not there is there and articulating that it is work that will go forward. So well, it's, really it's a process. It's a process. And I think we have to permit it to be organic. Yeah. Uh, and, and to bring in other voices. Um, you know, I don't think it was intended to shut voices out. The purpose was to really disseminate this amongst the community in a variety of different ways, both to boards and committees, but to other organizations, to all of the stakeholders. You know, and, and we were very deliberate, I think, in, in envisioning some of this work to say, we have very broad definition of community. We're talking about anybody who has a touch point with the town. Yeah, I agree. So we have to figure out how to get the words right to make that clear.
Other thoughts? Raman, are you thinking? I, I see you've unmuted. <laughs> this is like a precursor. Well, I, I was just thinking, you know, that you have uh, said this. Uh, we, we have just basically agreed to a set of principles, as everyone has been saying. And we came up with some ideas of what maybe would be desirable to happen. I think the town and the select board and the town meeting at some point, maybe not that this should really systematize this by incorporating a town-wide systematic uh, group you know, approach to this that would be longer term and would also have a budget. And in other words, the town has to make a commitment in a, in a long-term commitment to be able to implement all these things that we have expressed here. And um, so you know, I'm thinking about that, what that should look like, I don't know yet. <laughs> But I, I think it's not enough for us just to express a set of principles. That's good. That's a good start. That's a strong start. So I think that's true. And I think the goal to be able to figure out what might a budget look and what kinds of things would it need to cover yeah. is something that does need to happen, but we're not there yet. Yeah. So um, yeah. originally at one point, even we had it as a placeholder for this warrant, but it became clear that we're not there yet. No. Well, we could all think about this and, you know, maybe in the near future come up with some ideas. Yeah. Other thoughts? I know that Kate and Katie will be interested if there are things that are currently in the draft document that you think should not be included at all. And if there are things that are in the draft document or are not in the draft document that you think should be there based on the discussions we've had so far. Miriam, if I could just note that we want to send something to town meeting to make sure they have it before the meeting. We really do have to mail it the 27th. So all the wordsmithing has to be done by or at your next meeting. Okay. Which means that if you have feedback, my suggestion is that you should send it directly to Kate and Katie mm -hmm. so that they are able to incorporate it and give us a, another draft back before our next meeting. Just as a matter of process, uh, does does it have to go to the board of selectmen again and to the before it goes to town meeting if there are modifications? It's an interim draft from this group. It, it, the first draft, it the select board is not approving it or disapproving it. They are just taking it as input. So if no one has anything else, is the is meeting almost over? I, I was just trying to figure out like what's what do we have next on the agenda or um, where we are. And I know I saw Matt came off mute a little bit early. I thought he was going to say something after you spoke. And then I, I was like, oh, Matt's going to say something. I, I was ready for it. <laughs> and then and then it went back and we kind of moved on. So I was just like, I don't know if Matt wanted to speak. And I know you're talking about accountability and you know where you sat with everything and. Um, yeah, I think just hearing it, I think that was a good question by Noah, just kind of where we stand as far as um, on those subjects. And I hope everybody votes tomorrow. There's an election in town. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? I was going to say, I have that, I have that <laughs> as the last thing on my, on my notes for the meeting. Oh, very good. No, I wasn't, the, I took off mute because we were talking about, and I didn't get a chance to read the email, but the idea, and it was already said a couple of times, right, it, about public input and how this is a work in progress and it was good. I think Ramin, you know, it, it is a kickoff and it's gonna be fluid. And, you know, we might settle somewhere on housing, for example, and then we learn a lot, you know, different things and, and change how, what we suggest or interpret. So 
I just think the public input on maybe issues at a time instead of, you know, and we've, we've received a lot of public input. I think we've done a good job of getting the word out there, but maybe as we move forward, you know, we will get more narrowed on what the public input is on that specific category. But um, I agree with the comment about getting more public input um, and that this is just a work in progress. So that were my comments. And then I didn't know it was on the agenda as well after this, but um, I'll leave that to Marianne. Marianne, I see a hand up too. Okay. Um, you know what? Normally after we close a public meeting, we wouldn't be going back, but we will have Ross come in. There's time. Ross? Unmute. Hello? There you go. All right. Thank you very much. You know, you're all getting so good at this Zooming. I am so impressed. Um, I have a question. Uh, I don't know exactly what the agenda is, but uh, what do you think about the Needham Housing Authority? And uh, how does what you're doing impact me as a resident? So um, there were some recommendations, Ross, as they related to housing, but housing would actually be a good example of um, we, Lee Newman and Karen Sonnenberg had joined us to give us an overview of housing. We have not had any direct engagement with folks from the Needham Housing Authority. But I think we might be informed by their perspective and by having them join us for some part of a conversation. Um, this is not a policy making group, um, but it will be a group that will look to give some priorities, perhaps, and some suggestions. And um, I would hope that those would be something that the Housing Authority could take up and could be actionable. The desire for this group is that we figure out who would own something. So really, as you talk about how it impacts you, it, the housing authority is responsible for, um, for your housing. We need to figure out how we can best help them to have the kind of housing that everybody should have. Does that make sense? I'm listening. I don't, I've been here 10 years um, in, in one group. Somebody said, maybe the issues are not policy. Maybe they're potholes. Well, I don't know. I think there have been, um, I know that the Housing Authority has a vision for how they would like to renew um, much of their housing stock and that will take uh, some support from the state and from the federal government and from the town. So it's going to take some combined will to make those things happen. And that means it's not a uh, easily solvable tomorrow situation, but it is something that we need to understand what would need to happen so we can create a pathway for it. I think that's what you're asking to understand. And I think that's something this group would like to see. Somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong, but. Do you have any other feedback, Ross? Um, I'm speechless. So thank you. Thank you. Jen. Um, hi, everybody. I just wanted to throw out there, and I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time in the meeting to do this, but in thinking about how we get feedback from groups, whether it, it um, Ross's question made me think of it, that um, one of the things I think that we have been kind of churning from meeting to meeting is how to get that feedback. And I noticed um, on a, an email about, about a different group that was doing a, a listening session. Um, that they had 
um, Professor Gary Bailey, who I think has done some work with the Real Coalition there to um, facilitate the listening session. And it made me think it would be great. I, I would find it really useful at least to hear from somebody to maybe could come in and talk to Nuari about how we strategize around those listening sessions, perhaps in the next part of the work where we're talking about trying to set up channels, um, better channels of communication um, to groups that aren't maybe as comfortable coming and getting on a, a Zoom or coming to a public hearing like this. Um, if we could get some expert advice or training on how to think of um, collecting that feedback in a different way, that I think that would be really time well spent for us. One of the um, pieces of feedback that the one person who had filled out the form that Katie sent in today, I, I thought it was interesting, her idea that we put a comment board out in front of town hall that people could just interact with when they're at the park or you know, put it out at the tent or something. I'd be curious to see what we could learn that way. Isn't that creating some other what avenue. a website is for? Well, nowadays, <laughs> isn't the town comment page basically that? You're thinking of any old fashioned suggestion box, Marianne? You know, the old, uh, <laughs> right? No. It'll get stopped every day. Yeah. Whatever it takes, right. you know, yeah. I think we're interested in hearing it. Sure. You know, it, it seems like there are many routes that people have to give input, but we're always trying to find more ways, thinking there must be a key that we're all missing. For, for figuring out how to get that input. I think it's something that every committee and every board and every organization is always trying to get better feedback. Absolutely. I guess that what I'm saying is that I think, you know, everybody here on this Zoom is comfortable, you know, getting or giving feedback in kind of the ways that we've already tried. That's probably partly why we're sitting here tonight, but that um, it may be helpful to bring in somebody um, who does, you know, this as kind of their, their life's work in terms of trying to um, do outreach and get information from groups that maybe don't use those same kind of channels. Um, because I think that, you know, as, as somebody that's been kind of working um, with the town for years now, I know that there's lots that go on that people have no idea that happens. And I think that, you know, I've been part of um, plenty of efforts where I feel like we've, we've told everybody everything we can, how come nobody knows? And, um, and I think that it's really on us to kind of figure out, okay, why aren't they, why aren't they getting it? You know, um, I, I, when I think about particularly listening um, to Mr. Ross from the um, housing authority resident, um, that's something that the human rights committee has talked about kind of, up here a bunch of different times, but we have never really figured out how to, you know, have enough of a presence over there that people would feel comfortable coming to us to talk about what's what it is that they're concerned about. Um, so that's that's all I'm suggesting is that, you know, I think that um, there's lots of of good attempts for outreach that we are already doing, but that clearly there's some things that. Um, some people that we aren't reaching for one reason or another, and that it would be great to have a, have a focused discussion on trying to do that with people who, who facilitate that kind of outreach, you know, professionally, like Lisa came in to talk with us. I think that's a great idea, Jen. And it, it's pretty evident that what we've been doing in the past and so far hasn't worked as well as we probably would have imagined or hoped. So having somebody with that expertise that can maybe help guide us and really push us and how to collectively engage the community and consistently and maybe in one unified place um, with being able to reach back out to people in a, in a timely fashion, I think is important too. You know, if they're sending emails or whatever it may be, all that makes sense. I, it, it seems like it does. And, you know, I, it'd be interesting to hear from everybody else, but I, I love that idea. Vivian? Um, I've done a great deal of, I do a great deal of facilitation and outreach work in, in, in my professional life. And I, I think that if that's something that we want to do, I think we have to be very focused about what we're trying to achieve. Um, there's one thing to put sort of a comment board out on the town green, um, 
you know, we've, there's certainly been opportunities. People can submit questions or comments anonymously. They can submit them by email. They can sort of reach out to any of us. Um, but I also think that one of the things that we want to focus on is that our work is envisioning where we think Needham can go and understand that perhaps we're not the body that needs to be the repository for that feedback. I mean, it might be that it's it's the other groups in town who have the focus and the interest and, and who are supposed to be doing the work, um, whether it's the Human Rights Commission or the Housing Authority or um, the Select Board or FinCom or, you know, I mean, I think that we have to be careful about where that information and feedback goes. Um, you know, Jen, to your point, you know, it, sometimes people don't have, they don't take in the information that is put out there. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you can do surveys and you can provide results. And, you know, oftentimes the difficulty is that those facilitation sessions and outreach sessions can be, um, they may not be the safe space you wanna create and instead they become the spaces where the loudest voices are heard. And which doesn't necessarily give you the information that you're looking for in order to, to make progress and move forward. So, you know, I, I, I'd say if that's something that we're gonna be thinking about, that it's something that we should think about in a, at a very granular level before we embark on something like that. Because again, URI is not a formal group. We're, we're here as a, a working group um, to think about these things and, and to provide some guidance. I'm not sure that we're the repository for all of the information that gets disseminated to the people in town who have the accountability for it. Nor are we the group that is to hold those groups accountable. I completely agree. Um, but I, th I think that at this juncture, it seems like what we're trying to do is get feedback from the community about specifically our work. And, you know, we've got it looks like 21 folks who are on the call tonight who, you know, I know that um, every single one of them is extremely committed and already engaged in this work. And they have been here for almost every every meeting, you know, so we're, we're like super lucky to have them and get their expertise and their their perspectives. Um, but that's 21 people out of how many folks that are here in Needham, you know, and these are people who are already engaged. And I think that that's one of the things that, that to me, um, we're still struggling with is how to get folks who are not already kind of tuned into this, interested and engaged in the, in what kind of work we're doing. Well, my hope is that with our interim report, you know, as it's presented to town meeting that the word will go out. I mean, I, you know, I think there's something to be said about trying to use not only new avenues of communication, but existing structures. And that's, I think that's one way to get it out. And, and as I said, I mean, I think town meeting members need to be held accountable for talking to their constituency, which is, is the community that we are trying to serve in our work. So there's no singular answer <laughs> to that kind of facilitation and outreach. And I think that's also part of the outreach to organizations, to a broad set of community organizations, as well as all the boards of committees, is to inform and gather more people in this work. And um, I do know that when Sandy sent the interim report, she also sent the notice of tonight's meeting, you know, again, all those different pieces to, to help inform people. But yet it seemed like there was still some confusion kind of what tonight was supposed to be. Some of the feedback I, that I got about tonight was that they didn't know that it was a listening session, for example. And again, I, I know because I, I read Sandy's email um, and I'm sure that other people did too. So I guess what I'm saying is, is like, we can put all the information out there and it's still not trickle down the way that we want. And I think particularly, with the community groups in town who are already really actively engaged in this work, um, that perhaps we need to figure out a way to be more clear with like what the ask is that we're making of them um, so that, um, that we can partner better.
Any other thoughts? Just one last follow-up to, to Jen's comment, which is that uh, I completely agree. I think we need to, I mean, our work is to reach out to and partner with everybody um, in the community. I do think that there's a certain reality though, that there are segments and, and individuals who reside or have a touch point with this community who are not going to be as engaged as we'd hope they become. Um, and so that's where I think the grassroots efforts are in, in the community groups, engaging those individuals and bringing them, bringing them into the conversation. I agree with Vivian, but I think it has to, Vivian, I think the grassroots has to be intentional. Yes. Um, and I think it's not yes. right now. And I, I per se don't feel like we've had a lot of community input, but I don't know if others, you know, others have said that they feel like we've gotten some, I feel like we've gotten very minimal. I mean, it's the same uh, group that um, has given us good input, but I, I don't think it's cast, we've cast a big net out there. It feels, uh, still very siloed so I, I don't I don't have I don't necessarily know how to communicate this you know and uh for the town but I think we need to brainstorm a little bit about that well and I also think that um the question is how are people reacting to it right so so I think there's been a fairly broad net cast in terms of trying to say to people we'd like feedback all right part of what we get is I'm comfortable with what you're doing. I'm on board, I'm supporting the principles. There are people out there who are not supporting the principles. I've heard from some of them also. So, um, you know, but, but the principles are what we're bringing to town meeting and asking for them to endorse with an up or down vote. Um, and there will be, um, I'm sure some on some committees and boards who will not support them but we'll continue to work because that is the job that we've undertaken. Okay. Toyin, I'm gonna ask you, do you have any thoughts, last thoughts here? You can have a last word. I do not have any last thoughts this time. <laughs> Okay, I'm just checking. On that note. Um, so on tonight's agenda, because we did not have um, Mary Lemmy coming back to talk with us about the Metro West survey, she will come at the next meeting. We will um, talk with her and then we will come back to the report to being sure that uh, hopefully that we're satisfied with it because we will need to send it um, to town meeting members so that they have it ahead of town meeting. Um, and the warrant article, I think everybody had a chance to look at, but hopefully they have, um, really asked town meeting just to endorse the vision and guiding principles um, that Nuari has voted. Um, I was asked at the finance committee why we did not include the complete text of our vision and guiding principles in the warrant. Um, I will just share with this committee, this working group so that you know we asked the town moderator for his advice about how we should place the item in the warrant. And he suggested, in fact, that we place it as just an up or down vote. Um, that way we would not have amendments from the floor from people who had not spent the time weighing every word the way that this group did in putting together a complete package. Um, so he, we're really just asking the community to support the work going forward. And, um, and to endorse that and to join us as we move ahead into the next stage. I hope that they will do that. I think that town meeting was pretty clear with the select board last year that this was a priority for town meeting as a whole, but I'm hoping that that will come through again. All right. Anybody else have any last thoughts? I know I said I was giving them to Toyin, but I'll, I'll just let anybody else who wants to weigh in, weigh in. If not, I would, um, I would note, as Marcus noted earlier and Noah noted that tomorrow is election day. I hope that if somebody hasn't already voted that they will in fact go vote. 
I wish all the best to um, our candidates on the committee and um, look forward to seeing the outcome. So good luck to everyone tomorrow. Um, with that, I would welcome a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. I think I'm going to. I'm going to go around my screen here. Jen. Yes. Vivian. Yes. Sue. Yes. Matt. Yes. Raman. Yes. Natasha. Yes. Marcus. Yes. Toyin. Yes. And I'll vote yes. So I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing people out and about tomorrow. Everybody masked and distanced, of course. And, um, and then we'll all see you on April 26th, if not before. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Vote, Bye -bye. vote, vote. Tell everybody to vote. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>